So today I want to look to talk about the biosphere. Have you heard about the biosphere? Anybody here? Alright, but I suspected Mr. Um, Sidano would have known about the biosphere. What is the biosphere? This is the biosphere. So what happened is the University of Arizona, they have this dome that they built costing more, almost 200 million US where they decided to study plant life, animal life, to recreate it and to, to get ideas related to how plants grow in various habitats. So this was the biosphere. So I was reading about it and you know the funny thing the, the, about this biosphere? This is what this, these two things were the two of the major findings that they found out. One, the trees in the biosphere grew faster than in the wild. And the second one is as the trees grew, just before they matured, they fell. And they were puzzled, so as scientists, you know, they went and they how to find out what caused these trees to fall. So this is a picture of the trees falling. As they grew, they matured, they fell. Another one, the tree died. And when I heard the reasons why this happened, you know, it triggered something in my mind and that we could relate to to our spiritual life. So this is what I want to talk about today, the lessons from the biodome. So the first one seems simple. The trees fell because of the lack of wind in the biodome. They had no wind. And what happens is wind blows against the tree and the constant moving of the trees strengthens the roots. And what happened in that biodome is that without the wind, those roots never matured. And so they were never strengthened. And they, could, they were not able to hold up a mature tree. And I found that was so remarkable that they didn't even think about that the effect of wind, and that is something we may not even think about, how wind helps trees to get strong. And I had to relate it to our spiritual lives. You know, sometimes we face trials, and we wonder, well, why God allowed me to go through this trial? The trial may be economic, it may be health, it may be a trial in the workplace, it may be with the extended family, and this is why God allows us to go trials, to go through trials, sorry, so that we, our spiritual lives, we can be strengthened. And what happens when we go through trials? This happens. We pray more fervently. I know that I'm speaking from experience. We find more time to fast. And you know what these actions do? They spiritually anchor and strengthen us with our connection with God. So these trials that blow against us, God allows us to go through them to strengthen us. So let's go to the word. In James 1 verses 2 to 4, and I'm reading from the New International Version, and it states, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking anything. So, just as the trees in the Bible did not wins, if we have no trials, we will be able to mature spiritually and we will not be able to be complete. 
During your trial, you can't see that. You may be able to see it after the trial. But when we go through trials, in the midst of a trial, we will be able to see the benefits of the trial after. Another scripture that illustrates this point is in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 to 10. I'll just break it to the thought from verse 9. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, speaking about the devil, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings slash trials. And the God of grace, of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ. After you have suffered a little while throughout the trial, will himself restore you and make you, and this is the important part, strong, firm, and steadfast. Those are properties that the trees in the Bible didn't have because they did not experience wind blowing against them. They didn't experience that stress of wind blowing against them. So trials help us to establish a strong faith and reliance on our Heavenly Father. And it makes sure that we have firm roots so that we are not easily swayed. And with our trials, we run the risk of complacency. And we run the risk of having shallow and immature spiritual roots. And we may not be able to endure to the end. You know, a good point to note is this. Gordon put us in a Bible. He could have placed us in a protected environment where he insulated us from trials and tribulations. But he didn't. And the reason why he did that is so that we would develop strong and firm roots with the trials and tribulations that we undergo. And that would help us attain our full spiritual potential. I can't attain that without trials. You can't either. So we have to tag. That is one thing we have to tag him for. He could have placed us in an insulated environment, but he chose not to. Second, the second finding that the scientists found, the roots did not grow deep because they did not have to seek a water source in the Bible. So unlike a tree in the wild, those trees in the Bible were watered mechanically. They had their system set up where they were watered every day at a certain particular time. Unlike the wild, when a tree would have had to find water on its own. And while I was doing this, I was researching, and they said during dry seasons, the root of trees grow deeper in the roots because they search for water. And those trees in the Bible didn't have to search for any water. It was provided for them. And because of this, their roots didn't have to grow deep. So the spiritual lesson for this is that we have to be seeking out our spiritual water source. We can't just depend on coming to church and using that as our weekly watering and returning the following week. So we have to not rely on being watered on the Sabbath service, but we have to engage in prayer, meditation, study, fasting on a daily basis as we seek our spiritual water source. And that will, of course, allow us to grow deep, mature, and strong roots. Proverbs 2, Chapter 2, verses 1 to 6, provides some examples of this deepening process as we see God. I highlighted those in red. What can we do to be more source? My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turn in your head to wisdom, 
applying your heart to understand. Indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. So we have to ask ourselves, are we diligently seeking God? Are we applying our heart, turning our head? Are we calling out to him? Are we crying aloud? When last have we cried aloud? Are we looking as though we are looking for silver? Are we searching for it as though we are searching for hidden treasure? Are we storing up his commands in our hearts? We have to each look at ourselves introspectively to determine whether we are doing these things. In Psalms 119, verses 9 to 16, another prescription is given out to deep on the of God. How can a young person, old person like me also, stay on the path of purity? Living according to your word. I seek you, seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Praise be to you, Lord. Teach me your decrees. With my lips, I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. I rejoice in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your will. And look at the things that we should be doing, seeking you with all our hearts, seeking God. Hiding the word in our hearts, praising him, recounting all his laws, rejoicing, meditating, delighting, and not neglecting. So we need to actively seek our spiritual water source and deepen our roots and strengthen our roots as we become mature Christians. So, in conclusion, the lessons that we learned. The trees in the biosphere did not grow to maturity because of two reasons. One, their roots were never strengthened because they had no stresses or trials from the wind. Similarly, like us, we have to be thankful that we have trials and we are not placed in a biodome. He allows us to undergo various trials, whatever they may be. Because if we were in a biodome, we would suffer the same fate like those trees. We would be able to mature spiritually. And secondly, their roots never grow deep because they didn't have a search for water. Let our roots grow deep as we search for that spiritual source. And we have to be doing it diligently in order to establish strong, mature roots. Now, in closing, I want to close with this scripture in Matthew 13, verses 20 to 21. And this is the explanation that Christ gave for the parable of the sower. So I just took two verses from it. The seed falling on a rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. Perhaps I'll be choosing the Bible, a perfect environment. But 21 is the scripture that we should pay attention to. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. So brethren, the question is, are we strengthening our spiritual roots?